Okay, so back again, and this time I'm going to show you how to make this big monstrous combination lock. Um, as I said before in the other video about the uh, very simple number lock, there was a guy who did, uh, I'll probably put his name somewhere in, I forget off the top of my head, it was like 11 months ago, so I totally forget, it was like, oh, Nacho Bidness, that's right, Nacho Bidness had seen this lock, and he said, yeah, that looks cool, but I think I can do better. So he came up with his own plan, which involved using counters to create a number lock in which um, the number order does matter. And it's a little bit complicated, had some wiring, you know, that was all over the place, but it works. Um, when I saw the video, I was like, that looks cool. Um, there's a couple things that made me a little bit, I wouldn't say cautious about it but I was like um, there's something about it that I'm thinking may not work quite right or as well as he says it does and it had to do with the combinations and the, using the counters and those sorts of things and it took me a while to figure it out of course you know it took me a while because I took a big long break from playing Fallout 4 um, but it took me a while to figure out what it was that, you know, the back of your mind says, I'm not so sure about this. It takes a while before it gets to the front of your mind. You figure out why the back of your mind was saying there was something wrong with it. So I'm going to take a pause real quick and go look at his setup and analyze what it was that wasn't quite right. That kind of made me think that while it works, there are some potential problems with it. So I'm going to look at that real quick and then come back to this thing. And uh, this is probably going to take a while to show how to build. So, um, be ready for a nice long video. All right, so take a pause and be right back. Okay, so back here I've got in the me mechanist layer, I've got my mock setup of Nacho Business's um, counter setup for a number lock. Um, and it's, it is kind of complicated. First of all, you do kind of have to use the advanced settlement power mod in order for it to work because of the way the um, logic gates have kind of bugged out a little bit um, so there's there's a one it's really hard to tell what's going on because they all look the same so I don't know you know just by looking at it what the different gates are and what's going on and all that sort of thing so it is a little bit uh, less intuitive that way the other issue I had with it was it was really really difficult to get these counters to where they would all be set up right because you have to have them set up where they're, they're uh, a two count counter so that once it goes through two cycles it resets and when it resets it sends power and you've got to have it where they're all set at one so that once you push the right button which I think is nope it might be my two four six all right what were my numbers So five, oh, I think I did five one three, right? Or five three one. Yep, five three one was my combination, and I used the light here as my cue to tell me that it was working. Yeah, I haven't used this in a while. I forgot what the combination was. So, um. Mm, something's messed up. I forgot how it works again. Oh, yeah, I have to reset over there. Okay, so the light basically tells you that it's right. So, I mean, it looks cool. And the way he's, he had it set up, he used some other mods to basically embed these posts into walls. So all you could kind of see were the, the buttons, so it looked all right. Um, the thing that got me, though, was that you could really just solve this combination. I used, what was a 5 one, three. Just to make sure, five, one, no, five, three, one, five, three, one. So, yeah, there it goes. And it turns on, and you have to come over here and reset it over here. And it turns everything off, and the counters go back. So it does work in that sense. You have to push the right buttons in the right, right order. Because if I did one, 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 yeah, it's not working. If I did three, it's not working. It will only do it if you put them in the right order, which is cool. Um. The problem is it's really easy to hack because all I have to do is say, okay, well, I don't know what the combination is, but if I just go this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, 
this one. Hey, I got one of the numbers right. And then I just go through and I go through and push every single one again. And okay, now I go through and I push every single one again. Oh, look, the light comes on. I did not push the right numbers in the right order. I just went through and boom, 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 pushed each button, boom, 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 pushed it again, boom, 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 pushed it again. And because of the way it's set up, there is no real penalty for pushing the wrong numbers or for pushing them twice, pushing the right numbers twice. Um, there, there's no check on that. It only checks on the right numbers. And basically what I realized was that the easy way to hack this is just go through and if my combination like was one, three, five, I can just hit one, two, three, four, five, six, and it would turn on because I would have hit one, three, and five in the right order. So I would just go from left to right one time and hit the combination totally and completely by accident. And by also hitting wrong numbers where there's no penalty for that really. If I had a slightly different order, if I did like one, five, three, then it would take me two tries because I would hit one, two, three, four, five, boom. And then back here, and again, my second round, I'd hit three and that would turn the line on. And yeah, it's all you gotta do is like, at, at the most, it will take three times of going from left to right, pushing every single button, and then going back and doing it again, and then going back and doing it again, and do it two or three times, and you'll get the combination. You don't have to know it. You just hack it by randomly pushing buttons from left to right several times in a row. And that's it. So it works. It's good. Normal number order does matter, but it is really, 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 really easy to hack if you just do that technique of left to right, left to right, left to right until the door opens or the light comes on, depending on how you have it set up. So that's the setup. Uh, works, but those are my problems with it. And then I didn't like how easy it was to hack it. It was it was too easy to figure out ways to bypass it. Um, where yes, number order matters, but it's real easy to not know the combination, but still just you just real simple like a, a three year old would do, and just boom, 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 and boom, you got it. Pure luck, pure randomness, not even randomness. It's just a simple basic hacking procedure. So. Um, being kind of the purest that I am, I wanted something that was a little more in tune with um, the Fallout universe and the way things are designed, you know, really, really awkwardly and clumsily and big and bulky technology like all this stuff you see here. But I also really wanted it to be a lock that number ordered mattered and you had to know the right numbers and put them in the right order where if you tried to use wrong numbers, it would, it would fail um, and the whole thing wouldn't work. Um, this one doesn't really punish you for that. Uh, I believe in his video, Nacho Business had something set up where if you pushed a wrong button, a little trap would go off. But, you know, that's it's not going to do anything as far as opening the door, like resetting the code. So we have to start over from the beginning or anything like that. So um, works. See his video if you really want to know how it works. He does a pretty good job of explaining it. Um, but you do have to have that mod, the um, Advanced Settlement Power, which I do like. I do recommend it. It's a very good mod. I'm really kind of disappointed that uh, he was supposed to get some new textures for these logic gates where they didn't look as, um, I'm sorry, but boring and uninformative. Like, I have no idea just looking at these what they are. I have to go into construction mode to look at it and say, okay, this is... Um, Got two new wires in the way. This is an input for, that's the top one that matters, but it's being blocked here. Let me go to this side. An AND gate, okay? So it's an AND gate, and these are the inputs for that AND, the not AND gate, sorry, the not AND gate. And then there's another one, and then so, I mean, you can't tell the difference by looking at them. Here's an AND gate with its two inputs. Looks exactly like, you know, the not AND gate on this side. Can't tell. There's no symbology, no imagery, whatever, to tell you what's going on. You have no idea how it's working. I, I like Bethesda switches because they, they are very visual in the sense that you can see and hear what's going on with them. Um, these ones are not. the, But these ones actually work. They work the way they're supposed to. They work the way that logic gates are 
supposed to work. Um, Bethesda's gates are kind of a messed up version of it that only partially work and only under the right limited circumstances. And then they have a habit of bugging out anyways and then stop working. So, yeah. So I do recommend it. It's just, it is kind of difficult to use and remember what's going on because it just looks like a, a mess of power conduits. All right. So we're going to head back to the other place where I've got it set up. I'm going to show you how to do it. Or at least I'm going to show you the completed setup and basically describe it. And then we're going to go and kind of walk through how to actually build it. Okay, so here we are back again. Here is my combination lock where number order does matter. And if you put things out of order, um, you basically can't get in. Uh, so it's kind of like my improved, heavily super powered version of the simple lock over here. And my attempt at trying to fix some of the things I saw with Nacho Business's version of the lock using the counters. Which again, it works. Um, that it's just kind of easier to hack. I wanted something that was a little bit more difficult to hack that you had to actually know the combination and get it right in order to get in. So here's what it looks like from the outside. Again, um, using just the cheap old wood walls. I've got my switches with the neon numbers. I've got the wood wall automatic power door thing. So a um, little bit of advice. It is going to take a lot of space. It is a large setup. You're going to need at least three stories high and about two um, sections deep and looks like one, two, three, probably four wide. Uh, it's, it's a big setup, so um, just be aware of that. And when you're planning, make sure you have a lot of space for this. It's not a simple one, two panel thing like this one. Like this one here, I, I can make this like a two panel easily. I can have the power source on, on the floor. I can put these gates on the other side of this one wall. So it can all just be like right here's the combination. The gates are on the other side. The door is right here. Power source is behind it somewhere. So it basically just takes up this little tiny area. Um, this combination setup, it, it's monstrous. But here, let me demonstrate how it works. So first thing you do, you come up here, push this. And uh, you have to wait a little bit. And this is kind of like the, the beginning part of knowing the lock. You have to know to push the button. And then you have to know to wait for the green light to go out. That's kind of your cue. Once the green light goes out, you can activate the gate, which, if I remember correctly, is one, three, and five. And there we go. It does have kind of a little bit of delay, but there it goes. So here you can see the setup. It does involve the uh, trackball gates, uh, whatever that thing came with. I forget what that was. That contraption thing that had all the, the balls that rolled down the tracks and people made all different arrangements. Um, so it does use that. It uses some logic gates. They're fairly simple to set up once you understand the pattern. It looks kind of a mess, but <clears throat> it is a very simple pattern to set them up. It just does take a lot of wiring. I've got a lot of th other things set up in here. For instance, um, the doors on a 10 second timer. Um, you do have to reset the, the gates on the outside, just like with a simple one. So you do have to go to the terminal. Nope, I don't want that. What's the wrong one? Why does it give me that one? Switch control. Turn all switches off. Okay, that'll turn all the switches off. You do also have to reset this trackball setup. So that's kind of what this switch is. And I'll explain why as we go through. And then this switch here is if you're on the inside and you want to get out, you just click on that and boom, opens the door. And again, it's on kind of a 10 second timer. So after about 10 seconds, it'll turn off and the door should automatically close. Just like that. So again, activator switch, wait till the green light goes out, put in the combination. But let's say if I put in a different combination instead, let's say put one, two, three, and five. Um, 
Okay, so it looks like it's not going to open, even though I do have the right numbers, 1, 3, and 5, because 2 is also activated, it doesn't work. So there is, you know, con there are consequences for pushing the wrong number. So let's say I take 2 off. I'm reminded of... Uh, the Princess Bride, where Vecini is sitting there, and he's just sitting there going, I'm waiting. Huh. Right combination, but it's it's not working. Because by flipping that two in the middle of the combination, it messed up the series. And so now if I go back to one, two, three. Now if I go back and hit the five again, it should... All goes well. Unless I drop something. Did the ball drop? Did I lose the ball? That sometimes happens. The ball will kick out of the track and won't be in the right spot. Where is the ball? I lost the ball. Well, that's interesting. Oh, nope, there it is. Yep, I lost the ball. That happens sometimes. The ball will fall out of the track and not go down like it's supposed to. So, he just... No, I don't want that. Sorry, wrong thing. And store the ball. Okay, ball is stored. So, it's not without its flaws. Let's put it this way. So reset the switches. Let's try this again. Turn that on. Wait till it goes off. And if I go one, two, three, did that ball fall again? That ball fell again. Why is that ball falling? I don't know. That's an interesting problem. It didn't used to do that. I wonder if something's happened because I haven't played this in a while. You know, sometimes with the game, if you don't play it regularly, stuff gets a little bit offset or they don't quite work the way it did the last time you played. So, okay, let's just go through this step by step to make sure it works. So, okay, so this is actually probably a, a good way to show how this is going to work. So, what happens is you push this button here, and this, that big thing up there, which we'll go look at in a bit, that basically pulls a steel ball out of the, uh, the workshop for the town. So, hidden in this workshop thing, there is a steel ball. And that extractor up there, when I push this button, that extractor magically, through modern technology, technology of teleportation, pulls the ball out of the workshop, brings it here, and rolls it down here. <clears throat> so this first gate will only open if the correct first number is selected. And that first number should be number one. Oh, I bet I know what's happening. So I hit number one. Since that's the correct first number, that opens the first gate. The ball goes through. Here's what I think is happening. As soon as I hit switch number two, because two is a bad number, it's a bad combination. And so that closes the gate. So what I think is happening is I was hitting that two a little bit too fast. And so as this gate was coming back up, it was kicking the ball up out over the, the trench thing. So the ball would be sitting here and then the gate was 
I'd hit one, the gate would start to go down, and then I'd hit two, and the gate would start to come back up, and it would hit the ball as the ball was rolling past it, and as the gate's coming up and the ball's rolling over, the gate kicks it up and over, and it falls out onto the floor. So, that's, yeah. Unfortunately, there is no perfect system, so that's just what we have to deal with. So, I could hit three, which is the correct next number combination, but that does not open the gate for three because two is a bad number. And so because I have two, the right numbers, but a bad number also, the gate doesn't open. But as soon as I turn that one off, the next gate opens and the ball is sitting right there. You can see it right there, right along that gate. And then we hit the next button for five because all three numbers are now selected. The last gate opens, the ball rolls down, triggers this. When this power activates because the ball rolling through it, this sends power to this switch here, which is also a delayed switch, which then sends power to the door for 10 seconds. And then after that 10 seconds is up, you can see it turned itself off and the door closes. Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, kind of in a nutshell how it's supposed to be. So the extractor up there pulls out a steel ball from the, wor from the uh, workshop. Well, that was interesting. I haven't had that happen before. Let's try that again. Oh, sorry, the ball never got back in. All right, let's, um, hmm. It's funny because I <laughs> used this lock like dozens of times and never had any problems. Now all of a sudden it's just not working. Of course, you know, now that I'm making a video out of it, it wants to be obnoxious. Well, maybe I should have reset those. That might have something to do with it. Okay, so let's try this again. Extractor pulls the ball out. Ball goes in the trench. Rolls down the trench. Comes through. Hits that. Triggers that. And, all right, so let's try it again. The extractor up there pulls the steel ball out, ball falls down into the trench, goes through the gates, comes down, resets the switch, goes back into the storage thing that sends it back to the, the, the workshop storage. Okay, so, right. Uh, so it, it seems as if your your big issue is going to be keeping that stupid ball in the track. Everything else beyond that is fine. It's just that that, that ball, if things don't work, it, it bounces way too much. It's a little bit too light and bouncy for, you know, a steel cannonball. <laughs> I don't imagine steel cannonballs being that bouncy. They're just going to be like all boing, 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 like a bounce ball all over the place. All right, so... That's the, the basic premise. You can see it is, is large. It takes up a lot of space, mostly because of this arrangement here, of having this big, long track coming down and having the uh, extractor up top and the uh, storage one down at the bottom. The actual you know logic gate setup is pretty simple. The, the power source and everything is fairly simple. I mean, it looks complicated because of the way I've got it set up. I've got a lot of extra things added in, like... You got to have the reset switch. You got to have your um, terminal to reset the outside switches. You got this time delay for the door itself, which you don't have to have, but it does make it nice. And the extra switch here that if I'm inside, I can flip that just to get outside the building and not have to, you know, run around the outside. I put my little cheater door, here. you know, not cheater door, but left this open so I can run in and out without having to use the doorway. All right, so. 
I'm going to have to take another little pause because I'm going to have to go somewhere else to get a, uh, a kind of a, not a, a pre setup. I need to, uh, yeah, this place is basically maxed out on its construction limit. There, there's not a whole lot more I can do it. So I need to go someplace else where I can start building because this takes a lot of stuff. And I need to pre-build some parts and pieces to get it ready to show how to build. All right, so be back in a bit. Okay, so here I am. I've got uh, some things pre-built uh, in preparation for this, getting this going. Um, basically, I started with a 3x4 foundation. And then I went and I created these three stories high leveling areas because you're going to need to come up three stories high. And you need to end up probably over here. Now you can make your arrangement however you want to. Um, you don't have to put the whole track system right here like I did in the first system. You can put it anywhere you want to as long as you can get the wiring to reach where it needs to go. Um, but basically, yeah, you're going to need about three stories high and a lot of space to get this set up. So what I've got here is here's my gates. And I've already got them pre-set up. You're going to need, it's pretty much um, a three-step, <coughs> excuse me, repetition of what happened with the, uh, the very simple gate. Um, you start with an and, an X, oh, that's the wrong one. I put the wrong one in there. Hold on a second. Those should not be right. X nor I want the X or there we go. Oh, snap in there. there we go. Um, so yeah, AND gate, exclusive or other AND gate. AND gate, exclusive OR, other AND gate, and so on. And all I've done here is these numbers, those are the numbers for the combination in order. First number is one, second number is four, third number is two. That just helps me remember which one's which and which of these groups go where. Um, but the basic setup is going to be the same. Um, it's just we're going to do it three times that the good numbers go to the AND, the bad numbers go to the exclusive OR, and then both of these go to the AND. So I can pretty much just set up right now that this goes here, and that goes there, and that goes there, and that goes there, and that goes there, and that goes there. So here's where it gets really wiring intensive, because you can do a lot of kind of repetition. So my first number is 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take switch 1. And I'm going to attach it up there. Since that's the only good number, that's the only one that's going to this. Okay. Then I'm going to take all the bad numbers. So for the first time, if one is the only right number, if that's the first number of the system, then all the others are bad. So I want to take each of these and say, okay, you're going to there. Two goes there. Even though two will eventually be a good number, for the first part of the series, it's not. So three goes there, four will also go there, and five, and five doesn't want to work because there's stuff in the way. Let's see if I can get six to go, nope, there's stuff in the way or it's too long. I have to use one of those cheater things. Um, can I get up there? Dang it, I need more steps. Uh, that's part of the problem, I had to use this foundation, set them up too high, it's not easy to get up and around. Okay. There we go. So that one should have one here and then five. I only see three. Did four make it up there? Four did not make it up there because four, no, four did not make it up there. Yeah, that's not going to work. There we go. That got it. Okay. So 
since this is the first one, it only gets one number. All the rest are bad. So what this means is that if any number besides one, this is not going to work. If any number with one, this is not going to work. So it's one and only one will have this set working. Okay. Now again, just be, just like with last time with the, the much simpler one, this exclusive OR also needs that connection to power because that's going to be <clears throat> that's going to be your always on. So uh, yeah, in case you're wondering, all that you know, look up, look up, look up failed. Um, had some issues with some mods. The the program kind of glitched out a while ago. And I had to reinstall some things, but because I had some mods installed and I wasn't able to uninstall the mods the right way, um, they've kind of messed up my construction menus to where now some things don't really... The stuff is there, but the names don't always show up in the right way. And so I don't get all the data, and so it looks kind of messed up this way. But it still works. And hopefully, as long as you haven't had that problem, <clears throat> it should still tell you everything you need to know. So... A lot of wires going there. You're going to have basically six wires going to each of these sets. It's just where they're going to the top one or the bottom one. It's just going to make a difference. So you get a lot of wires going lots of different ways. So first number of series, only one number goes here. All the rest are bad, so they go here. So that means this one's on. This one's off because we haven't turned the first one on. So this does not activate. We're going to do the same thing here. With a little bit of a difference. Because we want them in order, we're going to say, okay, one should still be on now we're going to add a four so the second gosh dang it, too much stuff in the way all right let me do this wire trick ah no i went to that so one and four both have to be on in order for this to work but that means that all the rest of them are bad so we're gonna have to go and you know, connect them to all the other numbers. Oops. And five and six are still not working. So I'm gonna have to use that wire hack. There it goes. And the wire hack is where you have the wire highlighted, but the cursor is actually pointing to the connector. And then you can basically cheat connect wires that normally wouldn't. Okay, so how many are connected there? So I've got two, four, okay. One, two, three, four switches, yep. So I got two switches here, four switches here. That makes a total of six, so all of them are connected. Now I connect power to the exclusive OR, and that one should be showing all good, okay? So again, same thing. But this time we want switch one, switch four, and switch four does not like working. Switch four, because I got too much stuff in the way. And this does become part of the problem. You get so much stuff in the way, it's hard to get what you need. So I'm just going to hack that one too. Two, box two. Okay, so this one, because it's the third number in the series, has to have three switches, switch one, switch four, and switch two, all have to be on in order for this to work. But that means that we have to have the other switches also have to be off. So we're gonna connect that to, I still don't wanna do five. Let's see if I can do. There's one. And there are six. So I have three switches there, three switches there, and I also need power. So power comes down to that, which also turns that on and makes it good. So all my switches are wired to the gates where they need to be. I mean, it's a really, really simple concept when you understand it. First round, you should only have one good number. All the other numbers are bad, so they go to this. The second set of the combination, you should have two good numbers, the first one and the second. All the other numbers go to this. The third number of the combination, you have all three good numbers go here. All the other numbers go here. And every one of these exclusive OR gates 
also has to connect directly to the power source because that's their one and only one positive power. If any other power turns on, it breaks the circuit and it will deactivate, preventing this from being able to activate. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to try to take this out. I'm going to pull these in, which will pull some of my wiring out of the way, so it will be quite so visible. So it's now pulled back and hidden. Okay. Now, these gates here, these are eventually going to connect to the gates on the roller track. So what else we're going to need now, we've got, you know, our, our switches here. Um, we've got the, the logic gates. You need nine of them here for each of these. That's your basic setup. Now we're going to have to actually make the, the, the rest of the track. For that, you're also going to need three of these delayed off switches that are set for 10 seconds each. One of these is going to be for the track reset. One of these is going to be for just the, hey, I'm inside and I want to get out, automatic door opener. And the other one is going to be when all of these things turn on and you have the combination right, it's going to send power to this that will then send power to the door and cause the door to open. So I'm just going to put this here and wire it straight to the door because all of these are going to trigger that track you saw. The track is going to have that final gate. The final gate is going to come here, trigger this. And the only reason I put this here, I mean, you could have the final gate go straight to the door, but then it'll stay open as long as that gate is open. This gives you a 10 second opening of the door and then it automatically closes. So, I mean, there's ways you can, you don't have to use this. You can use the other switch that resets everything that'll automatically close the door because it'll reset all the, the gates and everything. But anyway, so this delayed off switch for 10 seconds goes straight to the door. I'm actually going to have the other one. So you're actually going to have two of these that kind of do the same thing. It's just they're going to be connected differently. This one's going to be... This one's just going to be a straight, I want to get out, push the button, door automatically opens. This one is connected to the, the track setup we're going to make that's going to open the door. And then this one, this one is going to be the actual track reset switch. So I'm going to put that like over here. And then you've got also another delayed off switch this one's set for four seconds this is going to be the one that's going to be the the opener it's going to trigger the whole thing start the whole system that without this none of these switches will do anything because this is going to turn on the big machine upstairs it's going to release the steel ball it's going to roll down the track it's going to hit through all the different gates and for that you're going to need an object extractor that pulls things straight from the settlement workshop I think you need, I'm pretty sure you need a mod for this because it doesn't come with a regular contraction setup. Um, there are some contractions mods that, contraptions mods that um, add more, um, more of these types of things, the more uh, extractors, more of the, uh, oh, stuff to scrap, um, more of the uh, machines to make stuff. All the different, there's, there's lots of those out there that add more different stuff than what uh, Bethesda included in the original Wastelands Workshop or Contraptions, wherever these came from. But this one is pretty much, the, it's the easiest one to use because it, the system works a whole lot better with this because you just make two steel balls. So I'm going to go to, where would I make steel balls? What do I do? Decorations, furniture, structures, I don't know. Somewhere in here you have to make two steel balls. Ah, yeah, here it is. So you go to this one here, and somewhere in one of these menus, I think it's this one. There you are. You're going to need two steel balls. Because one of them is going to go in this and say, hey, this is the item that you need to pull. The other one is going to go into the actual settlement workshop 
and be the one that gets extracted and then run down the track. So you're going to need two of these. You're also going to need a conveyor for workshop storage that once it rolls down the track, it comes into this and automatically goes back into the workshop, workshop storage. Um, there's probably some other ways to arrange it if you don't want to use that mod. Um, I imagine, though, it's probably really, really more awkward than I'm already making it. Um, way over there. Okay. Um, but these are going to be the, the best ways to do it because they just pull it out of the workshop. You don't have to worry about picking it up and rem remembering to do something with it or having some other arrangement to get the steel ball all the way back up to the top and then have some other release mechanism. This works really, really well. So what I'm going to do, and this is going to be the, the kind of the hard part because you have to finagle the location of everything. So I'm just going to take this. Run it up to the top. And it's going to need to go over here somewhere. Where exactly? I don't know. I'm just putting it up here ahead of time because I know I'm going to need it up here. And it's going to have to go down. So, oh, come on. I have such a hard time going down those stairs and hitting the hole right. <clears throat> so, and that looks like it's going to be angled, but that's all right. I'm going to. You kind of want to start from the bottom and work your way up to the top a little bit. So I want this is going to be probably over here somewhere. And then I'm going to need, oh, no, I, no, I don't need that one. I need power. I need this. I need one of these. I need one of these with power on it. So that the uh, so this thing because this doesn't have its own little power connector. Oddly enough, it has to be connected to something else that has power. So I'll just put this here because it does have a power connector, and then that will once I hook up power, it'll run, and everything will be nice and happy. Okay, so now this is going to be the the really awkward part because we've got to put the track in and get everything lined up in such a way. That it ends up down here, starting from up there. Yeah, it's especially if you can't hit the stairs because you're, I don't know, visually challenged with lining things up. So let me put another little floor piece here. Because I think if I do that to those, if I get this here. Looks relatively straight. I don't want it right at the edge, but I want it close. Now, there's two ways you can do this, which is kind of cool. Oh, I want that still. You can go here. And the, the funnel will... You have two choices where you want to snap it to. You can snap it to the floor. There you go. I'm going to take this out of the way. You can snap it to the floor. And I think that you could also... That's crooked again. I had it before where it snapped to the belt. It doesn't seem to want to now. Maybe I need this out further. There you go. So you could snap it straight to that, um, which depending on your situation, how you want to build it might work better for you and definitely would make it uh, less prone to fall off. So let's start with that. Let's do that. Okay. So, and this is probably not going to work. I'm, this is going to be a pretty sloppy setup because I'm just demonstrating this here. So, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to get, nope, it's not in there, it's in here. Is it? No, it is. Where's those gates? Ah, here we go, gates. Okay, so here I want the gates where it releases the ball when powered. So it's got the gate, and it will only drop the gate when it's powered. So I'm going to put that one there, and here's where that whole thing works. This here, the first number, goes to the first gate. 
So when this thing turns on, and that's going to be directly connected to that four second on switch we had out front. So when you hit that button out the front, that has got the little light on it and you wait for the light to go out. That's going to turn this on. The steel ball is going to come out of this. And the reason we give it a four seconds, because it takes about four seconds for this to turn on to teleport the ball and for the ball to roll out and get down to here. So from there, you hit the first correct number. The first correct number opens this gate. Then we're going to put another one. And guess what? Our second combination goes to the second gate. So, okay. Same thing, a uh, third one. So that our third number combination goes to the third gate. So that way, first number, second, uh, second number of the combination, third number of the combination, you have to put them in order. If they don't go in the right order, the gates will not open and the ball will not go through. If you do them in reverse order, it doesn't matter. The gates are not going to open in the right way. The ball is going to be stuck up here. It doesn't matter if this one down here is open, if the ball is stuck up at this gate and this gate doesn't open. So you got to come down here and then... What you're eventually going to want is to curve around and come onto this track. Now, you could just keep going straight out this way and make it longer, but I prefer to have this curve around. That's not the curve I want. That's not the curve I want either. Where's the curve I want? Well, that, that curve will work. Okay, so this is going to curve around, and then you want it to come to a gate that turns power on or off each time it's triggered. And that's going to be the one that we connect to this delayed switch that was for 10 seconds. So when this is all powered, the ball comes down, goes through all these gates, hits this, this triggers on, which triggers this switch here, which opens the door. And because this is time for 10 seconds, it only sends power to the door for 10 seconds. After 10, se 10 seconds, the door goes closed because this turns off power. So th this is one thing I don't like is this sets up by snapping that straight to that belt this comes up pretty high so we could add some more at the end of it to bring it down but I don't have any good steep ones that are nice and short that'll work that's why I like the uh... yeah that doesn't work very well either that's why I like uh, snapping it to the floor that brings it down just right ahead because one of the things you have to worry about is this comes down the ball is going to drop and we've already seen that that thing likes to bounce so there's a possibility it might bounce off the track and that could cause problems so what I want to do is kind of set this here um, I have to move this out of the way there so hopefully Uh, that should go all the way through, come down. If it hits here, and if it doesn't bounce off, it should go in here under the conveyor belt, into the storage, back into the workshop, sh workshop storage thing. Okay? So, let's put this back here. Now, we are going to need power for this. Now, I like using the... Uh, there's a mod for solar panels. They're really, really cool. They're I guess, quiet. It doesn't generate a lot of ugly noise. Um, but you're going to need quite a bit of power. Not a lot, but some, because we're going to power a lot of different things. Um, especially that thing up there, which requires three power. Uh, we've got all these things along here that all, they're not individual power, but they do need to have power attached to them. This is going to need power hooked up to it. Um, we have all these switches. We're going to have to have a computer terminal in here to do all the reset for all the switches, which I totally forgot to do. 
Um, well, sorry, actually, I don't need to because I can just hook it up to something else that's directly connected to the the switches, uh, which would be that there. So if I take a computer terminal, hook it up to that, that should work. Um, wiring is really, really picky because there are some things you're going to need to have isolated. For instance, this switch here. Let me get some lights around here too. So let me get some power and some lights. It's going to be easier to see. No, I said lights. Miscellaneous lights got them, the ones I want. I think the ones I want are in here. Those ones are pretty good. There you go. There we go. There we go. So um, this one here is going to be the one that's going to reset the whole thing. You can't have it connected to all this. It's got to be on its own separate power source, its own separate wiring, because otherwise it's going to cause a mess of confusion that if you switch this and it's connected to the wrong things, the gates won't function right. So what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to, in order to get that set up, I'm gonna need to, well, first I was gonna run some power to test some things. So let me put some power in. What would be a good power source? That one does 10. We'll just roll this 10 out here. Or not 10, 5. So that's going to go there because that's going to be always on. Um, those are all powered, so that's running power to there. Which will eventually run power to here. And that should be enough. Nope, that does need power, doesn't it? That needs power, that needs power, that needs power. Did I power the switches outside? I didn't power the switches outside. That's part of the problem. Gosh dang it. Okay. Let that one go. That one won't either. So. There. Okay, so let's turn these all off. Oops. Okay, and I'm going to take. Steel ball, steel ball, and I'm going to go put one steel ball up here. So transfer from junk, I want one steel ball. So that way it knows what it's going to pull. Then I'm going to go to, where's the workshop? Nope, oh, wrong. That one over there. Free the robots. Yeah, they really could have made such a cool story from that. Oh, they didn't follow through with that at all. Okay, so I'm going to transfer junk, and now the steel ball is in there. Okay, so. What I want to do is I'm probably going to need to Run power from that to that. Yep, there it goes. 
So I need power to there. All right. And then I'm going to need to connect. This is where the wiring gets tricky. You have to use some creative um, placement of your wiring. So I'm just going to kind of sloppy make this because I'm not worried about this looking good. I'm just worried about it being functional. So I'm going to run this up to here. And then another one. Oh, doesn't want to. There. So from there to there, from there to this switch. Then I'm going to need to run from that switch up to there, but it doesn't want to because there's stuff in the way. That's uh, not going to work very well. Um, let's use one of my other cheater modes that I do. I just take this, set that right there. There, that'll work. Not not pretty, but it works. I'm not worried about it being pretty right now. I just want it to work. So. This button down here is now going to be connected to that up there. Um, I do need to connect this to power. So when that turns on, it should be pulling out the steel ball. And the steel ball is sitting at the first gate. Excellent. So it works. So now I want to flip the first switch. And one of the, I guess, bad things about this is you can hear when a gate opens. So it is kind of a visual cue for somebody if they wanted to hack it and they just, they knew about that sound. But if you don't know about that sound or if you've got, you know, a whole bunch of other sound like motors and stuff overpowering it to make it to where it can't be heard, then you wouldn't have that issue. Or if you put this far enough away, like in the back of the building, and then just run the wiring to this, which would be really, really complicated, but you can do it, um, that would work too. So first gate's down, ball should now be at the second gate. So the next number of my combination is a four. And you can hear the gate open. And just to check, Yes, that gate is open, but notice the first gate is closed because now we have numbers that don't fit up here for the first one. We have the number one, yes, but we have something extra, so that breaks that one, which means this gate doesn't work, so that gate goes back to being closed. But that should be okay because the ball should be right there. And so our last number was a two. So that should open. The third gate, closing the second gate, the ball comes down, triggers that. Oh, yay. And it worked. Triggered that. Powers this. Ten seconds later, it shuts off. And it did bounce a lot, but yeah, I guess it'll be all right. I wonder if there's like some fencing I can put along this thing to make sure nothing falls out. That would be kind of cool. I wonder if I can. I'm going to try that and see. Uh, da, 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 da. Wood. Fencing. Does fencing snap onto that? Well, I can kind of smudge fudge on the side. It gives me a little bit more of a wall there, but not a whole lot. Oh, well. Not important. Okay, so that works. Um, and this button here is oh yeah i gotta turn all those things off again forgot to put in the uh terminal let's do that Need to put in a terminal Oops. so i can reset those switches
Okay, terminal. Oops, why did I do that? Terminal. And I need to hook the terminal up to... Actually, it really doesn't matter. I think if I hook it up... Stop. If I just hook it up to that... Oh, that's not hooked up to power. I want to be careful what I hook this to so that it doesn't like connect to all the wrong things. So that didn't work. Um, just dang, I keep hitting the wrong buttons. It's funny that there's some places I can put this and other places where it doesn't want to go. Like right there. Huh. All right, then. Okay, so now I can use the terminal. Switch control. All switches off. And there we go. So this should... It's showing... Oh, I didn't hook this up to power. That's why. So if I hook this up to power, to power, that'll work. There we go. So this is my I want to get out button. This is the 10 second delay off of this switch. Now what we need, see here's the problem. This is showing green, which means it's transmitting power, sort of, but it, because this is on 10 second delay, it doesn't care anymore. So what I need to do is I need to reset this so it goes back to red. That's where this is going to come into play, and this is where we're going to need to have some separate wiring for some things. So we've got to be really careful about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Put three of these, one, two, three, one for each of these gates, because um, you can't do a, a connect, because if I just go this to this to this to here to one of these, because these are also getting power from here, there, there's just this really weird power flow thing that stuff gets confused. So basically you just want to have this goes to each of these individually and it triggers each of them individually granted that that triggers them all at the same time but because of the way um, power flow works on these it basically flows in both directions so Power can flow from this to this to this, back to here, and then, you know, it's just it's some weird way that, um, basically what happened, I had it set up once before where I had these, like, linked together, and I was thinking, well, if I just run from this button to one power conduit here to one of these, and then I have them all linked, then when this button gets pushed, the power will run through here to this one, to this one, to this one, they'll all open, which, yeah, it did. But what I didn't think about was that power works both ways and that if this one turns on, it sends power here because this is also linked to this one and this one. It's also sending power to these. And so you basically just, <laughs> it was like, hey, you get the first number right, all three gates open and boom, you're done. It didn't matter about the other two. So I realize you have to do them individually. Actually, I don't even know if I really need those. If you need to do it that way, you don't need to do it that way. What am I thinking? Should be able to just run one to there and to there. Nope, that doesn't. That's exactly what I did last time. That's why, because if this one has power, because, you know, somebody gets the first number right. Power comes from here. Power will travel along this wire here. Go down this wire here to this conduit. Travel this wire here to this one. And travel this wire here to this one. 
So that doesn't work. I knew there was a reason why I didn't do that. So yeah, you need to have three separate ones because that way if the first one turns on, power goes to this wire here. It may go to this wire here, to this conduit, but then the only place it's going to go is back down here and nothing happens here. So you're going to want these all nice and separate from each other. Otherwise, you're going to get power running in directions you don't want it to go. And stuff doesn't work right. Okay, so now this button has three individual condu conduits, each running to its own gate. So that when I push this button, power goes to all three of these at the same time. They all open. Oh, but wait, I also need this to run up to that. Because this button also needs to turn on the machine to put, kick out the ball for the ball to roll down the gates that are now all open all at the same time. Roll down the track and reset that switch here. Which means this also needs to get power from here. See, that's on. It's on 10 second delay. So for 10 seconds, these are all open, which is enough time for the ball to come out, roll down, go through that, reset it back to red, roll in here, and everything's good. One thing I want to make sure of is that these power connections are not connecting to the wrong thing, because if it's it's they're, the way their power is wired like anything connected to the same power source are all interconnected and so like power can go from this wire back up to here up to here and whatever these things are connected to so you have to be really really careful about how you connect things what gets power what's connected to what power source that's why you have two like the one the solar panel on the outside versus this one on the inside because you have to have separate power sources for some things. If they're all hooked to the same power source, it's not going to work. So, there it is. It looks pretty ugly, pretty complicated. And, yeah, it kind of is. But, um, yeah, so that's see how it works now. Make sure everything is operating right. So, we hit the start button. You can hear the machine up top kick out the ball. Light goes out. Um, shit, was it was it one four two? So one, I can hear the gate open. Four, I can hear the next gate open. Two, I can hear the third gate open. And now there goes the door. And if I had stairs there, I could be able to go in. So then, after about ten seconds, door closes. Come to the terminal. Switch control, all switches off. And then I hit my reset, which kicks out the ball again, opens all the gates, ball rolls down, comes out here, resets the switch, bounces into the storage container, goes back to the workshop where it belongs. And if I need to get out, I can just push that and for 10 seconds, the door will let me out. All right, so, um, yeah, it looks kind of complicated. Um, it is a little bit, especially the first time. So basically, things you're going to need is a bunch of AND gates, about two, four, six AND gates, three exclusive OR gates. You're going to need the, uh, you're going to need this guy to not be in your face. Go over there. Go over there and stay there. Ah, okay, like I was saying, six AND gates, three exclusive OR gates. The setup for the wiring is pretty much identical to uh, the original, really simple version I did. Uh, you just have to change which ones, like first number, you only have one wire going to because there's only one number good at the time. The second number, you get two wires going to it because there's two numbers that have to be active at that time. And for the third set, you should have three wires coming to it because you got your all three numbers for your combination have to be on for it to work. The exclusive ORs are all the numbers that are wrong at that time, and that's what's key. 
So you should have one good number, five bad numbers, two good ones, four bad ones, three good ones, three bad ones. And again, these are all connected to the other and, and each and goes to its respective gate. The first number goes to the top gate, second number goes to the middle gate, third one goes to the lower gate, and then you have this switch here, which connects to a 10 second delayed off switch, which is directly connected to the door. So that when everything works right, the ball comes through here, triggers this, powers the switch, switch opens the door for 10 seconds, and then switch turns off. You've got this, which has individual connections to each gate and to the um, extractor up top. So that when you push this, it will kick the ball out, open all the gates at the same time, reset the gate here. You've got the storage uh, conveyor belt here, which sends it back to the workshop. You got your terminal, which is connected to the power source that all of these switches are connected to. That's really, really important so that it can read these and actually control them. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of wiring. If you can use conduits to arrange some of the wiring, just be careful because the conduits are not selective about uh, what's connected to what, uh, especially if you need to do some individual wiring like you need to do right here for these. Conduit would not work at all for that. It might work for, you know, powering the switches on the outside. Like if you want to put a power source on the inside, you want to just run to a, you know, have one of those conduit. Why are you here? I told you to stay. And you want one of those pass-throughs that will have a conduit point here. And then you can just run it to all of these switches. And that would work also with the terminal. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can do. There's a lot of different ways to rearrange this. But the basic premise is still going to be the same. You're still going to need a lot of space, about three stories high. Um, not a lot of gates, but there is a lot of wiring between them because basically each switch out front has to go to three different gates. Plus they also have all the power needs to be connected to everything. So yeah. Um, so there you go. Combination lock that order matters. And as far as I know, cannot be hacked. The only way I think somebody could hack it is if they sit here and they like flip a switch and they listen for the gate opening. And they're like, okay, I heard the gate open. So that means that was a good number. So if I flip this one, was that a gate open or was that a gate closed? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. So the, the sound cues may, you know, help. They may not because it's hard to tell if that thunking sound is a gate opening or closing because of a good combination or a bad combination. You can't really tell. So there you go. Um, the only mod you should need for this, from what I can tell, I mean, I do have a lot of mods installed. I mean, I'm using the solar power mod. That's just for convenience. You don't have to. You can use your, your traditional uh, vanilla type power plants that actually, you know, will be really loud and might cover the sound of the gates thunking, which might be a benefit. Um, the only mod I think you really, really need for this is the one that gives you this conveyor workshop storage and the uh, object extractor that pulls things straight out of the workshop. Um, those are the only two things that I know you absolutely have to have for this to work. But there's probably some ways around it if you can figure out a way to get that steel ball to somehow get lifted all the way back up here and have some sort of trigger mechanism that will release it again when you push it. So I don't know, maybe have some sort of elevator type thing that will lift it all the way back up and then have a gate up here that it holds the ball until you push that you know starter button and then it releases it. Those are the only things I can think of, but I'm not sure if that's going to require some mods too. So, uh, yep. So that is the build for the combination lock, the more complex, non-hackable combination lock. Uh, lock. Uh, kind of time consuming, takes a little while to figure it out. Uh, you might have to watch the video a few times to go through step-by-step step how it's done. I, I hope everything was there that you need. 
I tried to explain everything. I know I skipped a little bit at the beginning and, and pre-building some stuff, but hopefully that's pretty obvious because I didn't connect anything. Um, yeah. So good luck with it. Have fun. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and add them at the in the comments section. And enjoy.